flood the heart of your people. That your people, oh God, will see light from your word like never before. We pray for our audience online. We ask that the same light flood their heart. That Jesus is honored in the course of teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. We are still on part 12 or part 13. I have lost count on what true worship is. And today our text will be taken from Mark chapter 7. I'll read 6, 7 to 9. Mark chapter 7, 6 to 9. Mark. You see, your dream and your vision is a function of your doctrine. If you are in a church where they're always talking about devil, devil, your dream will be devil. Your vision will be devil. Because your doctrine informs your dreams. He answered and said unto them, Well had Elias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me? How? Teaching for doctrine. The commandments of men. Next verse. For how? Laying aside the commandments of God. So a church can actually lay aside the commandment of God, use the name of Jesus, use the Bible, but they have left the teaching of God. Now, when these people were singing, worshiping, as it were, Jesus said, in vain they are doing it. They draw nigh to me with their lips. But their heart is disconnected from me. Because what gets your heart involved is your doctrine. Am I communicating? I'm not done. For laying aside the commandments of, me, of God, ye hold the traditions of what? The traditions of what? And what such as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. Nine. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own tradition. Colossians. Colossians. Chapter 2. Verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Philosophy will be knowledge in the natural. The word and is the Greek word kai. That is, if vain this it. When we call it vain, it's empty. So people can teach empty things in church. As I went to America, the Lord just said to me, turn like this, I saw a man, and the man gave me this wristwatch. That has no spiritual benefit to your audience. What did I say? It has no spiritual benefit to your audience. The same God that gave me this wristwatch, I decree and declare, mm -mm, it has no relevance. They are vain. They are empty talk. Look at how he puts it. He says, vain deceit. After the tradition of men. That's where I'm taking you to. When a man deviates from the doctrine of God, he will embrace the traditions of men. Our people say, this is how they do it. My culture say, but in the midst of this, the Bible, the gospel has its own philosophy. The gospel has its own tradition. The gospel has its own culture. And the culture of the gospel is Jesus Christ. And we must not deviate from Jesus. So what is true worship? We said true worship is not a song. We said true worship is not about dancing. Yes, a song may be contained in worship, but true worship is our doctrine. And look at what the choir has done. Each time they come to sing, you will see the doctrine of Christ is what they end up preaching in the course of their song. Like what we said earlier on in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Quickly, I'm doing this to bring you up to speed to what we have today. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. You are wondering, I didn't finish that. No, I didn't finish it because I just wanted you to see. There is the tradition of men. They are empty. They are deceitful. And they are philosophy. They bring the knowledge. Man's acquisition of knowledge. For you to function in the future, you need to further to further to future. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
all of those things are philosophy. You don't need it in church. You need to teach Christ in church. Am I communicating? And they sung a new song. How was the song? The song was not with melody. It was a saying. It is a teaching. Our doctrine is our worship. Our worship is our teaching. Now look at the next word. He said, what were they saying? Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the sea thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. What was their song? What Christ has done? How that Christ was slain. Redemption has happened. So our song must be the song of what Christ has done for us in redemption. Did you hear what I just said? Songs such as Satan don't fought for gutter has nothing to do with redemption. Songs like Satan, come. Are we good to go? Media, are we good to go? Mark chapter 7, 6 to 9. He said, he answered and said unto them, where had Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrite? As it is written, these people honored me with their lips, but their heart is far. He said, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of what? Men. What are the commandments of men? For they, for laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. Next one. It says, and he said unto them, for where you reject the commandments of God, that you may keep your own tradition. We said a church can actually deviate from the teaching of Christ and come with a lot of dogmas. They come up with their own tradition they bring to church. However, in the midst of this, that the gospel or the Bible has its own philosophy, has its own tradition, has its own culture. And we said the philosophy, the culture, the tradition of the Bible is the teaching of Christ. Now, the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 2, which we read in the course of teaching, Colossians chapter 2, quickly because I need to catch up now. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Verse 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you. Now, what does it mean to beware? Be on the lookout. Be at alert. Avoid it. Beware. He said they will spoil you. You think they are, collect, they, are, they, are, they are helping you. They are spoiling you. Through what? Philosophy. What is philosophy? Knowledge that man acquires. He said, that is vain deceit. Now, when you say something is vain, it's empty. After the tradition of what? Man. After the rudiments. And no. Next verse. Maybe I'll do that now. Next verse. Now, so anything that takes you away from Christ, you have entered the commandments of men. You have entered the rudiments of the world. He said, for in him, that is why we must teach him, dwelleth all the fullness of God bodily. It means Jesus is the complete explanation of God. So we can't understand God outside of Jesus. So we must not teach the tradition of men. We must not be engaged in philosophy. We must not be engaged in vain deceit. Now, the reason is it will not lead you to Christ. That is the activity of men. And people can be in church. And yet, it may be an AC church such as we have. We are not against that. But what is being taught is what matters. It's not how cozy the environment is. It's not the comfort you have there. It is the content of what is being preached. And what must be preached must be Christ. And so we said our doctrine is our worship. I say this so that you understand that your dream and your vision is informed by the doctrine you hear. When you are in a church where they are always talking about demons and devils, your dreams will always be around demons and devils. Why? Because your doctrine is your worship. Am I communicating here? Now, we now read the book of Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 that they sung a new song. What was the song? It was a saying. It was a teaching. And the song is a reflection of the work of Christ. His death, his burial, his resurrection, and what that has done to sinful humanity. That in all of that, God is glorified. And we quoted the book of Philippians 3 verse 3. He said, we are the circumcision that worship God 
God in the spirit and we have no confidence in the flesh. So, when we talk about the worship, song may be involved in the worship, but the content is what explains it. The teaching, like you heard the choir did today. Hello hope, hello joy. And all of this we find in the book of First Corinthians. That all of these things are the things that we have in Christ. Can somebody say amen to that? So today we are starting from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. We use two different renderings. It says, now thanks be unto God, which always, how often, always, how often, always, causes us to do what? Triumph in Christ. Say, I have victory in Christ. Say, I have victory in Christ. Say to your neighbor, how often do you have victory? Always. We have victory always in Christ. Now look at the next thing he said. And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. So it means if Christ must be known everywhere, the perfume, the fragrance of Christ must be through me. That talks about evangelism that you and I must talk about Christ so that everywhere he will be known. Come on, talk to me now. Look at the next one. For we are unto God, what? A sweet savour of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. For the believer, you are a sweet savour. A believer sees you, he's excited. He said, Pastor, he just came to me. And immediately he came, he just said two things. Something came alive in me. And when Brother Emeka just met me, Daniel is talking now. Pabe is saying, when he met me, you know, some things... Actually, we are running in my head. And all of us, he said something. We are a sweet server to those who are saved. And then when we meet the unbeliever, we don't keep quiet. We tell them the message of Christ. We tell them what Christ has done for them. Because that is how the fragrance of Jesus can go around the world. Give me another rendering. We are reading 14 and 15. Please, I want you to take note of what we are doing. I'm fast because we need to catch up with time. Somebody say amen to this. So, we are the trophy of Christ. We are the victory of Christ. We are the proof of the victory of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, I want you to understand you are the proof of the victory of Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection produce you. And it was a triumphant one. Therefore, you are the proof of the victory of Christ. Who is the first to say amen? And in all of this victory, he causes you to triumph also. Look at, he said, but thank God he has made us his captive and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere. Everywhere you are, that your office is an opportunity to spread the knowledge of Christ. Am I speaking to somebody? You are in that bus, you spread the knowledge of Christ. Everywhere you find yourself in your family meeting, you spread the knowledge of Christ. You visit home is an opportunity to spread because God will not come down to do it. He's depending on you to do it. And Paul said it on a note of thanksgiving. He said, thanks be to God. Let's, let's read it again. Look at it. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Look at your neighbor. I'm a sweet perfume of Christ. Everyone... Everyone, say with me, that comes in contact with me, they will perceive the perfume of Christ. I am an extension of his perfume. Have you ever had a designer's perfume put on you and people are repaired? No, people are attracted. Friends, I see men being attracted to you. And it's your duty to share Christ with them. Everyone you come in contact with is an opportunity to spread that perfume. Did you hear what I said? It's not, see, if you can talk about Z word, you can, you can spread the perfume of Christ. If you can talk about Hollywood, you can spread, spread the perfume of Christ. If you can talk about, oh, big brother is raining. We have a bigger brother. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of God and appointed. He died for you and I. In his death, burial, and resurrection, he brought many sons to glory. You are one of such persons that he has brought to glory. And it's your place now to make the knowledge of this Jesus. The perfume of Jesus, let it spread everywhere you go. Help me tap your neighbor say, I'm an ambassador of Christ. The Bible said to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing on their trespasses. Did we say something like that? So we will do that again and we will take our bearing from the 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18, 19 and 20. We did that on Thursday. So we will take it off from there and let's enjoy ourselves today. Glory be to God forever.
He said, and all things are God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of what? Tap your neighbor say you have a ministry. Ask your neighbor what is the name of your ministry? Ministry of reconciliation. How is that ministry done? To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto how did he do it? Not imputing you see, the challenge we have in church is that when you go to preach to people, why are you smoking cigarette? That is not the message. What did I say? Why are you drinking beer? That is not the message. The message is Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection. Why? Christ was not counting their sin. Therefore, you are not an accountant of sin. Tap your neighbor say, you are not an accountant of sin. There is a better thing you can count. Count money. Instead of counting sin. Because God was not counting their sins. You know why he didn't count their sin? He came to die for their sin. And if he has died for their sin, your work is to tell them that their sins have been paid for. John 1, 29. When John saw him, the next day he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Can I shock the church? Church, can I shock all of you? Micah chapter 7, verse 18, 19, 20. We did it on we did it on Thursday. Join me, Micah. Who is God? Who is God like unto thee? That does what? You are not in church. Let me hear you. That does what? And pass it by the... Hold it. He said, who is God? That is to say, this is the only way you distinguish God from other gods. Other gods don't pardon iniquity. As you they do and you they collect your own. Woto, woto. Hello? But our God, the only way we differentiate our God is that he pardons iniquity. That is why a believer should not be talking about karma. Karma has nothing to do with Christianity. Amadioha cannot pardon. Ogun cannot pardon. I'm giving them place. You know what I'm talking about. I don't need to mention their stupid names. But the truth of the matter is God is distinguished in that he forgives iniquity. Look at the next word. He said he retained not his anger. You will be confused forever. But why did he say he retained not his anger? Because he delighted. He will never arrive at the point of anger because mercy speaks always. Tap your neighbor and say, this is the God we are talking about. And he has commissioned you as an ambassador. Your work is not to go tell them their sin. Your work is to tell them that someone has dealt with their sin. Am I communicating? Look at the next verse. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue. Nobody is in charge. He will subdue. And thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Can you go find it in the depth of the sea? What God means to say by that figure of speech is, I deal with the sins of mankind to the extent that you look for you, you will never find it again. So the sacrifice of Jesus, death with sin once and for all, that you can no longer find sin. Am I communicating? I know what is in your mind now. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm born again. I know I made mistakes yesterday. I committed sin. Eh? After the Bible says, shall we continue in sin? That great may abound. Let's see if the Bible answers that question. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Let's see if the Bible answers the question. Quickly, we want to. I've not gotten into what I have today. Romans chapter 6. Can we ask the question? One to go. Shall we, what shall we say then? Shall we continue? Now take note, it said in, it didn't say to. There's a difference. There is, it didn't say shall we continue to sin. It said shall we continue in sin. For what purpose? That grace may abound. You read the next one. God forbid. What is the meaning of God forbid? Impossible. Impossible. How shall we that are what? Are we alive to sin? So, by nature, the nature of sin is taken away from us. But the more we expose ourselves to the teaching of the word of God, we escape, we overcome these other vices you, are, you find yourself getting involved in. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, look at the next word. Live any longer therein. Everybody read verse 14. Everybody read verse 14. He has an answer. One to go. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under, but under what? So what does grace do? Grace is your strength over sin. 
Grace is the power to overcome sin. Law is what empowers sin. Tap your neighbor. Say, if you slip off now, something is wrong. Go. Tap, tap him. Tap him. He's close to you. Tap him. Tap him. Glory be to God forever. You know, sleep has a way of disgracing people. Look at me. Everywhere, look up. You just uh, start opening your mouth in the public. If we are sharing money now, you won't sleep. Eh? If we are... Of where? Praise God. Glory be to God forever. So what are we trying to say? We are saying that God deals with the sin of humanity, including your own. Yours is forgiven, but we have people perishing in the world who have not heard this news. And God says you are an ambassador to go and tell them, to spread the perfume of Christ to them. That the perfume that will quench the stench of sin is in you. And you must spread it. Write it down. The perfume that will quench the stench of sin. I'm carrying it. And you must take it to the dying world. And let the dying world know that the stench of sin has been dealt with in the sacrifice of Christ. And today, we carry the perfume of Christ. And look at what Jesus said in Acts 1 verse 8. Pastor quoted this today. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses. The word witnesses means you are my evidence. So as much as you are Christ's perfume, I want you to also know you are the evidence of what Christ has done. Help me look at your neighbor and say, I'm the evidence of what Christ has done. I am saved to serve. I am saved to save others. So to be saved comes with a responsibility. And that responsibility is to go spread the perfume of Christ. Am I communicating? You don't sit on the knowledge of Jesus. You go communicate the same knowledge of Jesus. You know, you may say, Pastor, I'm not qualified. What is your qualification? Everybody say BA. Christology. Say BA in Christology. What's BA in Christology? Born again in Christology. Don't be a born again in the traditions of men. Don't be a born again. Invent the seats. Where you tell people, you see, see, since I, since I, look at the wrong word we use. Since I gave my life to Christ, see, the, see my life is beautiful now. Look at the wristwatch I'm wearing now. In short, do you know this, my glasses, I bought it. I, I bought it this. And now I'm a millionaire. How many of you want to receive Christ? Who likes poverty? Is poverty your calling? People will run out like that. Because what you preach, you have not preached Christ. You have preached things to them. And they will come out on, the, on account of things you preach. Because they too want things. Are such people saved? Talk to me. Are such people saved? Have they heard the gospel? The gospel is a definite message. The rich needs it. The poor needs it. The sick need it. The ones who are held, held in needs it. So the gospel is not selective. Tap your neighbor. Say the gospel is not selective. You know what I'm saying? Me. If your gospel is only to reach men, I question your gospel. Because your gospel, which is the gospel of Christ, does not select whether you are rich, whether you are poor. You remember the case of a rich young ruler that came to Jesus. True? Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus. People were coming because the gospel is not selective. Even the poor came. So when your gospel is, I've heard a man of God say, you see the class of people God called us to reach. They are the rich people. Fa, fa, fa. Talk to me, fa, fa, fa. That is not scriptural. Because it said, go to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Poor, middle class, rich, they need to hear the gospel. Because man has a common problem. What is the common problem of man? Sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is dead. But the gift of God. Is eternal life. So in the midst of sin, eternal life has been given. Tap your neighbor, say, I have eternal life. I spread that perfume everywhere I go. The reason the Holy Ghost is given to me is that I will be an evidence. Tap your neighbor, say, I'm qualified. Say like you mean, say, I'm qualified. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, look at what Paul said. Paul began to talk when it comes to the gospel. He said, for I am not ashamed. Of the gospel of Christ. Why? It is the power of God. So how does God save people? Is it by saying, I have a new wristwatch? 
Is it by saying, look at my life, I used to be poor, now I have cars. Because the rich men in the world, most of them don't know God. They have all those things. And that cannot be the gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is it? It is the power of God unto self. So what saves men is the gospel, not your testimony. His testimony is what saves men. Top your neighbor. Say, not your testimony. He said, hey, if you see our pastor, they build church in Borobi. When you come to our church, you become rich. That is, you have not preached the gospel. You have preached the greed in your life and the greed in the life of your hearer. And as soon as you preach that, the greed will make the person come to be rich. But they have not come for Christ. Say, pastor, why are you talking like this? It's like you like poverty. No, that's not what that is. We must separate the gospel from things. Why are you feeling this way? Have I offended you? Help me tap your neighbor. Say, even if a pastor offended you, forgive him. Who is here to say amen to that? Amen. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, 23 and 24. So the worship of God is our service. And we serve by spreading the perfume of Christ. Save that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city saying that bonds and affliction abided with me. This is Paul. But where I'm going to is verse 24. Everybody read 24. One to go. But none of these things move me. Neither can I my life dare unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. What is that ministry? To testify. Help me tap your neighbor. Say your own ministry is to testify. To tell somebody. To be a witness to what Christ has done. To be an evidence of what Christ has done. To be a proof of what Christ has done. That's our ministry. To testify the gospel. The gospel is his death. His burial and resurrection. We thought a fortnight ago that Paul received the gospel. Paul also gave the gospel. So the gospel you have heard is up to you to share that gospel with somebody. That's your ministry. Paul said, I must testify this gospel. He said, that's my ministry. The gospel of the grace of God. Squeeze your neighbors and say, we have the same gospel. We have the same ministry. When you fulfill your own, you will hear, well done. Thou are good and faithful servant. Every man will stand. Pastor will not stand for you. Your wife will not stand for you. He said, we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It's called the Bema seat, a seat of reward. That everything you have done in your lifetime, whether good or bad, you will be rewarded for it. And I want you to know, Jesus never gave a suggestion. He said, go. Go means a command. Preach the gospel. Somebody say amen to that. First Timothy 1 verse 11. I'm beginning to rush so that we'll finish. First Timothy 1 10, 11. 11 I said. 11. He said according to the word. So what you carry in your mouth is a glorious thing. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. Which was Help me say it's a commitment to my trust. If God so trusts you, trust God by going to do it. He trusts you. You can't disappoint him. Paul said, it was committed to my trust. Talking to Timothy. He says, it's a glorious gospel. Committed to my trust. So what is the gospel then? As we make progress. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 2, 1 to 4. Please fo follow this. I taught this in a series. When I preach on, we preach not ourselves. When I taught on, we preach not on ourselves. And we preach not of ourselves. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with what? Oratory. The social communal credency of the stupelical socomat. No, you don't need oratory. Just go. Tell them Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose. His resurrection was to save you. Because the wages of sin is death. He died your death so that you can live his life. You don't need oratory. So, Paul, I didn't come with the excellency of speech, of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. What was the, the, the testimony of God? The death, the barrier, and the resurrection. Next verse. He said, for I determined not to know anything among you. Save what? Jesus and him. I didn't look at you now saying, eh, election is coming. Let me use election to preach to you. No. It's, it's a determination to stay with the gospel. 
Tap your neighbor. Say, say determination. To stay with the gospel. Other things will be enticing you. Tap your neighbor. Other things will be enticing you. Other things will be competing for your attention. But you must stay true. Infidelity to the gospel. Paul said, I determined. It means when they got there, they wanted him to talk about, oh, poverty is everywhere. Anointing to break through. The spirit of prosperity, I release it. No, he said, no. When I teach Christ, other things will be handled. He said, there were other things among you, but I determined to stay with the gospel. Tap your neighbor. I also determined to stay with the gospel. Needs will always be there. But the gospel will check, take, take care of those things. Who is the first to say amen here? Was Paul insensitive to their needs? No. Paul knew the mother of all things that were handled these things. He never gave attention to those things. He focused on these things. Are we making progress? And I was with you in weakness. I identified with you. And in fear. And in much trembling. But look at verse 4. And my speech. And my preaching. Was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But the demonstration of the spirit. And of the power. So I stayed true. In fidelity to the gospel. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. He said, oh, no, no, no. Say it like you mean. How did you pronounce? How do you pronounce it? Ununa. Inuna. Have you heard? Don't. How do you say it in Ogoni? Eh? Eh? Say it out now. You are sh- Oda again. Oda again. I make them. Stay true. Stay true. How do you say it in Yoruba? Shotigbo. We're hungry, huh? That's how we say it in Nisha. Did you hear? When I say we're hungry, where you say me hungry. We're hungry, huh? Say me hungry. We're hungry, huh? Say me hungry. Am I coming? Me hungry looks like a name in the Bible. Me hungry. Oh, glory to God. So you're awake now, isn't it? Are you awake now? Uh-huh. Now, so that is it. We must stay true to the gospel. Second Corinthians chapter 6. I like to read 1 to 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm just rushing through and I know you are blessed this morning. Are you blessed? Yes. Learning something? Do we have ambassadors here? Yes, ambassadors with the perfume of Christ? Yes, Not the ambassador that Nigerian government is paying and they are stealing from us. The ones with the perfume of Christ. When then? We then? Come on. We then what? So, I want you to know that the work of an ambassador, someone is working with you. God always wants you to be assured of his ever abiding presence. He said, when you go low, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He said, we then, as workers together with him, beseech you also, that you receive not the grace of God. In Raise up your two hands. Say, the grace of God upon my life will not be in vain. The fragrance of Christ, the perfume of Christ, must be conveyed, spread, communicated through me to my dying world and to the brethren. Who is the first to say amen? Paul said so. The other word is for he said. Come on, put it up here because the light here is disturbing my, my vision. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now. Now that this age has not closed, now is when to do the work of salvation. When Christ returns, there will be no need for salvation again. It will be for judgment. Every now in your life, you must utilize the now for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look at the next verse. Giving no offense in anything. That the ministry be not blamed. Stop excuses. Stop getting offended. I don't like our pastor. When he preaches, he doesn't look in my side. There are people that pastor looks at. My brother, learn the word of God and leave pastor alone. What did I say? Learn the word of God and leave pastor alone. There are things pastor is dealing with. But when we come here, what brought us together is not pastor. 
What brought us together is the word of God. And pastor is only a vehicle to communicate this word to you. Pastor is a man. He's not a, a God of God. He's a man of God. What, what a pastor? A man. So he has his own weaknesses. Look away from those things. As long as he's teaching the truth of the word, keep to it. But what you are thinking in your heart is not what I'm doing. That you think I'm only looking at the rich. You know what I said into your heart? Inferiority complex. Deal with it. Don't allow anything to make you feel inferior. We have the riches of Christ. Raise up your two hands and say, I have the riches of Christ. It's superior to every other thing here. I have the riches of Christ. Who is the first to say amen? But in all things, what should we do? Approving ourselves as the ministers of God. How do we do it? In much patience. There are places you go to, like our brother asked a question this morning. They rebuff you. They push you back. Be patient with those people. You can go back to them again. That is how the ministry is proven. In much patience. What again? In affliction. Sometimes in necessity. Nothing's in your pocket. Sometimes in distresses. But the ministry, we must approve ourselves. God knows those things will be there. Those things you give as excuses, he knows they will be there. But you must approve yourself, making sure you fulfill your work. Look at the next verse. In stripes, Paul went through this. Imprisonment. In tumult. In labors. In watchings. In fasting. There are times you need to fast for a soul. This soul must stand fast in the Lord. I fast. Lord, this man, every spirit that is making him not to give attention to the word of God. I bind those spirits and I speak to your heart. Your heart is receptive to receive the word of God. You go there and I say, leave me alone. No. I've told you not to come back. You go back and say, Lord, I'm taking a fast. Archbishop Ben Siddhartha said, there are no hard grants. There are only weak people. You are not a weak person. You are strong. Whatever was hard before as you live here, you are taking those territory back. In the name of Jesus. Look at, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love on fame. Pastor quoted this this morning. The love of God constrains us. When we see what Jesus has done, we go out of our way to make sure nobody goes to hell. God is not willing that anybody should perish. You too should not be willing for anybody to perish. Raise your right hand and say this with me. I'm an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through me, the fragrance, the perfume, the sweet smell of Christ will spread to my world. In my lifetime, no sinner will go to hell because I will release the perfume of Christ. Who is the first to say amen? Can we read the last scripture for today? Second Corinthians chapter 5. We stopped in verse 18 or verse 19. Where we stop? We are stopping there. Second Corinthians. Glory to God. To wit that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And had committed to us the word of reconciliation. You read verse 20. Everybody, one, two, go. Now then, what are we? What are we? Uh -huh. As though God did beseech us. You know the meaning? God is begging us. All what I'm doing, I'm not the one begging you. God is the one begging. Begging you, say, Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled. Give me two different renderings of verse 20. We will read it together. Everyone, we are reading verse 20, and that's where we are closing. I told you this is the last scripture, and today, my finally is finally. Hallelujah. Read with me. So, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal. Evangelism is a plea. God is begging through us to the world. Begging the world, you must not go to hell. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said evangelism is a plea from God. Let's read it again. So, we are Christ's ambassador. God making his appeal through 
So each time you are going out to witness of somebody, God is begging through you to, the, to your hearer, making an appeal. Through us. We speak for Christ. When we plead, we are begging men, come back to God. Message rendering. Can you imagine? The only way God can beg is to beg through you. You didn't hear what I just said. God begs through you. Ha! Let's read. We are Christ's representative. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We are speaking for Christ himself now. Become friend with God. He's already a friend with you. This is what we are talking about. I feel like crying. How we do now? Our church, our church, souls are dying. How we do now? Our church, we are having another program. Uh, breaking the first born limitation. Our God reigns. Woo! Anointing for unusual demonstration of favor. Three days program. When you are coming, come with gallon of oil. Meanwhile, God is begging. You didn't hear me. I said, meanwhile, God is begging. Man is full of activities. That is why you see our doctrine. He said, in vain they worship me. He said, their lips with their lips. He said, their heart is far from me. As long as that thing is giving them money and giving them popularity, we must be the reigning church on earth. That is not what Christ called us to do. You didn't hear what I said. Christ didn't call us to be the reigning church. Because once Christ is revealed through us, you will never see the word vine field church. You will never see the word Royal House of Grace. You will never see the word Church of God Mission. What you see is the body of Christ. So we are not into empire building. We are begging the word as Christ employs us. Making an appeal. Be friend with him because he has become friend with you. Did you hear what I just said? Look at it. The differences. And enter into God's work of making things right between them. We are speaking for God himself now. Each time you open your mouth to witness to people, you are speaking for God. Hello, church. I say, hello, church. Is there another rendering there? Give me another rendering. Maybe amplified. I love the words we have seen here. God is making an appeal. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal as it were through us. We... As Christ's personal representative, beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. You know, when you become a house committee member or house of representative, they give you constituency project. Friends, this is your constituency project. Evangelism. Begin it from your Judea, your Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. Where you are, you can start. You don't need a degree. You don't need a qualification. You have BA, born again, in Christology. Because the message is Christ. The message is not wristwatch. The message is not suit. Hey, designer suit. Shame on us. Because we are not called to preach designer shoe. Shame on us to say I'm wearing Gucci shoe. Shame on us to say you don't know how much my bed costs. When men are dying, God is making an appeal through us. We are begging the world to be reconciled back to him. Wherever you are, bad down your heads and talk to God. You are an ambassador of Christ. God is begging through you, speaking to her. Shana Mahakesto. Frega faga faga tu stefragate. Faga fu de karahashu katana maha. O naga baba hash. Shana mahosti vaga namaha. Come on, talk to him. Zegaste fagasta. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. I want you to make a commitment to him because it's a commandment and a commitment he has sent us. And my place is to bring the word of God the way it is. It's not about me, it's about him. The one who died and he was, rose. He was raised. He said, Pastor, me, I can pray. If you can pray, you can, you can preach. You don't pray for sinners to come to Christ. You preach to them. You are not to sing for sinners to be repent. You preach to them to repent. Father, we thank you. 
You know, right here, there's someone here. I want you to look up. You know, as we just started praying, I saw someone here. here. I, that's the best way I can describe it. There's this excruciating pains you feel here. This region is what I saw. I'm not calling you out because, you see, God reveals to redeem. It's not about showmanship. It's not about showmanship. When God reveals a case, it's because he's, do, he's done something about that case. Here, I see pains. And I stand today, and I bring healing to you right now. In the name of Jesus. You see, the death of Christ brought us to a place where we receive healing. Therefore, every part of your body where you need healing, I stand on the premise of the sacrifice of Jesus. I demand the healing power of God over you right now. Satan, take leave of their body. Their body is the temple of the living God. Pain disappears from your body now in the name of Jesus. Well, let me also show you. I saw someone in excitement. I saw you in excitement because there was a phone conversation you just had. As you dropped the phone, I saw you jump up and you were excited. Now, I can hear in my spirit, there's good news for you. Yes, receive that good news. I, I know what I'm saying. There's good news for you. Receive that good news. I see it come true. You have been waiting for it. You have been waiting for it. The Lord said to me, you have been waiting for it. But that news come true now. This month you receive that news. And you will celebrate. I see you celebrating. I see you celebrating. And it comes to power because God confirms his word. Father, we thank you. There's someone here. You had a call. Your bro I'm hearing a niece. Your niece, your niece is not feeling well and you are troubled. But I bring healing over that niece of yours. Your niece. I didn't say nephew. Your niece is a girl not feeling fine. But I bring healing to that person. Thank you, Father. Yeah, there is a family here. God will want me to minister to you. And this is how I will minister to you. You people entertain fear in certain seasons because there had been a negative occurrence in your family. So once that season is around the corner, there is fear. But you see, God did not give you the spirit of fear. So I stand to declare God's word that fear is not of God. He has given you sound mind. And there will be no evil occurrence again. Affliction will not rise up the second time. I speak to that family. I speak to that family. Whatever is responsible for that fear, I dismantle them. And I replace it with the boldness of God. Yes, 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 yes. You have been threatened. But I don't want your heart to, to, I don't want you to lose faith. Because the threat, they come to naught. The Bible says they will take up cancer. It will not stand. For God is with you. So that threat they give to you, it comes to naught. That threat comes to naught. The Lord will have me say, never you take it seriously. Take it with a pinch of salt. Because it comes to naught. Let them speak the word. It will not stand. Because God is with you. We pray, lift those hands up. Oh, I feel, I feel an anointing to minister to some people here today. Shabalaba hakato. Evarana shushagaba. Fragisto baranante. Elangusta zike prada. Elangrato shekeradatis. Elamandra da kisto vagastelikaba. Shogo, shogo, shogo. Shogo sagalaha. Thank you, Lord. I have this word of prophecy for somebody here. You've been saying the time has not come. The time has not come. The Lord said, look around you. It's happening already. It's happening. You, see, you have been postponing it. You have been looking forward to it. But no, the Lord said, it's around you right now. You can breathe. You can breathe in. You can have a sigh of fresh breath. Because it's around you, the Lord will have me say. Because you have shifted it to the, you have shifted it forward. You are saying four more time. No, the Lord will have me say this to you. It's around you. Stop looking into the future. For I'm doing it right now. Say the spirit of God. This was somebody here. It comes to pass now. Thank you, Lord. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah.